I relocated to uh, Houston uh, in 2007. The presence of the internet. All my rec old records was popping up all over the internet. You know, people who followed my music from the underground. But when I was working radio with FM 98, WJLB in Detroit, I was still in the lab a lot. If I'm gonna do this artist thing, I need to be at the show. So I just started doing shows. Black Pegasus Records. My man Mark Davis out of uh, Shot Town. Through that situation, you know, MF 911. We re-put an album out. I met this cat out of England, emailed me some beats, took a batch of his beats, we recorded the album, The Underground Chronicles, We're shooting videos, uh, I'm investing in my music, I'm promoting, yo, we can do a group, we'll call it The Rock and Rollers. You know, that goes really, really, really dope, 2013. Uh, I come back home, you know, so I do a couple solo albums, and then we come together two, uh, two years later, do another Rock and Rollers album. So at this point in time, you know, we get the ticket for me. You know, I'm set to go out in July. Two or three shows set up. I can't be down there for three weeks, make no money, no nothing. So he's a big Wu-Tang fan as I am. So I reach out to Ron's Nazareth. You come down, if we put you on the bill, we'll have a bigger show. Now we got about seven and eight shows. Ain't nobody fighting. It's a great tour. We're doing these shows. Some of the shows is booked. Some of the shows is not. It don't make a difference. I'm happy with it. Tours over. My man Roll Blunt, he wanted to be a part of Bronze Nazis of the Wu Tang to have that Wu Tang credibility. But when I got back to America with my daughter, Aunt Lied this, Aunt Lied that, you owe me money. Whoa, 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 man. We was just in England, it was just all love. You was paying the shit you were supposed to pay. But what it was is he had by this point in time, he had already built with Bronze Nazis, I'm thinking. And they had already said, yo, I'm going to be rolling with you. So I need to be able to recoup some of this shit that I didn't lay on Ant Live. But the bitches thing about it is he was saying, Ant Live this, Ant Live that. But when I came home from, from England in 2015, Chuck D was waiting on me. Hollered at my MF911 guys. Let's do the MF911 album. You get behind that, Chuck, and the Rockwell Johns album. I'm putting that album out through Slam Jams, Spit Digital. You know, the guys had already felt some way because of that. All of this is me coming together, going out and link, relinking with Chuck and building that relationship. I set up an a, a album release for us in Houston. The guys come out. They come out the first time we shoot these videos. We damn, we fight. Grown ass men, we fight. We go back home and they come back for the album release. 2016, me and the guys, we not talking no more after November. It was easy and it was dope to go start fucking with Rockwell on the music, on the hip-hop shit, you know what I'm saying? Dealing with the rock and rollers and the shit, rap and the main names from the MF, the dissension and the the, the, the the beef and all of that and, and the pressure. And then, you know, when I work with him, I'm not mad at niggas because if that's the way they think they got to get it is to go back to me, me, the guy, I get it. Yo, I need to do this, that, and the other thing. Here's my music, here's my production, here's my discography. Here's who I work with, this is where I'm at. 